لو كان سلعة تباع لبذلت فيه الأموال العظام أو صعد في السماء لسمت إليه نفوس الكرام بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين Welcome all viewers and listeners to yet another episode of the TBM Podcast, which is a project dedicated to helping examine with knowledge contemporary affairs that is happening in the Muslim communities. Likewise, we discuss, as you all know, topics such as studying in Saudi Arabia, benefiting from some of the most prominent Islamic scholars of today, and how to apply to different universities, juggling marital life along with studies, self-improvement, uh, education, books, and much more. Today, we have, bi ta'ala, a very important uh, podcast, kind of like a follow-up from last podcast as well. Um, uh, discussing some of the issues that may have been a little bit of uh, misunderstood or not really, you know, brought up clearly uh, or as clearly as it maybe should have been in the last podcast. So we hope to, you know, have a very insightful and important episode where we'll be diving into a range of crucial topics. Some of these topics being brought uh, in light of the comment section from you guys in the last podcast. Um, but first, before we jump into that, uh, we want to. Uh, take a minute to revisit some of the key points. So I got a few clips that we want to discuss um, from the previous episode that we, where we discussed Tamiya, of course. And in Tamiya, we discussed, you know, what's the meaning of it, some characteristics of it, some signs of it, um, the definition of it, um, ways to point it out. Obviously, not giving any type of clear hukum or ruling on anybody in particular, but we did point out things in which uh, to be aware of. So in this conversation, that sparked a lot of, you know, uh, discussion in the comment section. We're going to look, look into that. After we discuss those um, two points, we're going to move on to the main topic of today, which is how to deal with mistakes of the scholars. Now, this is a subject that holds extreme uh, significance in all of our, you know, journeys of seeking knowledge and intellectual growth and understanding. Scholars, it's important to understand that scholars, no matter how distinguished they are, are not infallible. And that's just something we understand and we know. So today we'll be exploring different you know, aspects of acknowledging and addressing errors made by those who we may look up to in the Islamic world. What is the proper way of dealing with this in Quran and Sunnah? Then we'll finish the show with talking about using scholar statements as proofs, which is uh, an area that is you know, fundamental. Um, so before we get started, a quick reminder, uh, as we get go into it, remember to subscribe, hit the like button, share this video with whoever you, you see they may be able to find some type of value in it. Hayakallah, Muhammad, keep it high. Hayakallah, ya lasan, barakallah, keep it high. Alhamdulillah, tayyib. So like I was saying in the introduction last week, it was, um, you know, it was a lot of back and forth, a lot of things that, you know, people, I think, uh, may have misinterpreted. So I want to, you know, go ahead and jump right into it. Allah, to be honest, I mean, I haven't kept up that much with the comments. I was reading a few days after the podcast here and there but mm -hmm. for the most part uh like you've mentioned a lot of mm, what i would say is a lot of learning opportunities in the mistake in in, in the in the comments a lot of mm -hmm. things that i suppose will spark a lot of discussions and important topics we'll talk about today because there's a lot of confusion in the mm -hmm. comments and mm -hmm. i think it's it's good to address it because at the end of the day they are our audience and then they deserve it yani. nah. Definitely, definitely, definitely. So, um, without further ado, unless you have any updates, we can go ahead and jump. Time it may take a few. Let me, let me, let me stop that. Just, I just start playing out of nowhere. So, um, you know, without any further ado, we can go ahead and jump into it if you're ready. Shall we? No, no. Bismillah. Oh, sorry. Maybe it's better to read <laughs> yeah. the comments first. <laughs> Not, and then to, in, be honest, in life. to be honest, to be honest, yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, I wanted to go over the, the small clips first so that we can give a little bit of clarity. And then look at it in line with the the comments, you know, with the comment section. Because no. if we, un, if, we, if for example, if I'm someone who's commenting, I'm assuming that you already watched this. So let's refresh the people who may have maybe not seen these points or missed these points. Then let's go into the comments and look at it in line with this and see if that criticism is in line or maybe there is something that could be ambiguous or whatever. Yeah, but my point is maybe it's best there for the audience first to know what the criticism is so that they can listen to the clip and, and and judge for themselves if, if that it was and actually talking about the criticism, if you don't mind Akhi, if i could just um quickly um mention something important regarding the criticism which mm -hmm. of course i mean we are uh, ready for criticism we welcome criticism 
as of a matter course. of fact, and I'm sure you're probably going to show in the clips, we said, criticize us based on the content, you know? Yes, and um, there are many critical comments, alhamdulillah, but how many of them pointed out a mistake in what we actually said? That's the question. I know one person, yeah. who pointed out a, a, a linguistic mistake, Jazakallah yeah. khair. Um, I think that that's, that's really the most important thing. Um, if I mean, for me, Shall we read the comments later? But I saw the three main criticisms to be three things, inshallah. And I'm sure these clips will show. But one um, really was how can you or how dare you to directly or indirectly uh, attack or label him Mumayya? That's what some people they claimed. Mm -hmm. And others said, how can you talk about him without watching his five hour podcast? Again, something that you know we're going to examine based on the actual podcast that we actually said. And then the other one, which was. Um, uh, mentioning proofs and the likes we did mention some proofs at the end of the podcast and we promised mm -hmm. to mention more inshallah ta'ala and that's an ongoing uh, project but those are the three main criticisms that i had had noticed and i think it just gives a bit of context to i suppose yeah. the audience when they watch these clips so they can look out for those things inshallah yeah let's go ahead and look so i have it right in front of me so one yeah. of the ones that you're, you're referring to uh it says claiming to not have watched a single minute from this video and releasing a hundred plus minute indirect refutation labeling him as a Mumayyad is very dangerous. If you guys did your homework, you would know that this is that, that in his video, one, uh, he never said it's permissible or encouraged to sit with Ahlul Bidah. Two, he used the scholar sitting with Ahlul Bidah to show the inconsistencies that his bees have when criticizing, not to show its permissibility. Let me read that one more time. He used the scholar sitting with Ahlul Bidah to show the inconsistencies that his bees have when criticizing not to show its permissibility. I guess it's clear. Uh, three, the supposed video of him with a person of Bid'ah was taken without his acknowledgement as he did not know who the person was and never posted this. So what I put in response to that, I said, the main goal of this video was to provide a clear understanding of Tamir. Um, it, if you found it helpful, alhamdulillah, feel free to show your support by liking the liking the video. On the other hand, if you didn't find it informative, then it's perfectly fine too. Your feedback is valuable. It's important to clarify that if we believe someone exhibited characteristics of a mumayyit, we would address it directly. There's no need for ambiguity. May Allah That's bless exactly you. Exactly what we said. Exactly what we said yes. in the podcast, <laughs> which we're going to see, which we're going to see. However, uh, and I said, may Allah bless you. However, I want to emphasize that in this instance, we neither stated nor implied such a distinction as clearly stated in this podcast. May Allah guide, guide us all and grant us success uh, in our pursuit of knowledge. So then he responded back, which I didn't respond to, but I was hoping we can do it in a in the uh, podcast today. He says, going through, he said, I mean, going through the terminology of Tim Yeh, and then saying this is a characteristic of a person who sits with Ahlul Bidah, something Abu Taymiyyah is being challenged for, uh, sets up the viewer's mind to think that way, and it is dangerous, especially as you guys claim to be tackling contemporary issues. What you're basically saying is if the shoe fits, which is in fact an indirect reputation. You brothers have a great platform to teach and must use it in the correct way, Barakallah Fikr. So that was one comment, and we're going to, don't worry, we're going to come back to it and address All right, it. Yeah, okay, I mean, I mean, that, that, the last bit of that comment, really, to be honest, one of the biggest own goals I've seen in my life, yani really, because at the end of the day, that statement of if the shoe fits, then you should wear it. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that statement. As a matter of fact, the statement that we always say, which is, and know the truth, you'll know its people, or uh, know the batil, the false, and you know its people. That's a true statement. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his book, apart from some in some individuals, in many places in the Quran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refutes falsehood, he refutes it based on the characteristics of that falsehood and those people of the falsehood. Allah says, in the kafaru, and he mentions some of the things that they do, or uh, regarding the munafiqun or the Prophet Muhammad. So the thing is, you have sifat, right? Now, if with this statement or that comment that that commenter made, you know, if, if you're saying that the shoe fits, then you're the one that's accusing someone, it's not us. We mentioned in the podcast, which you're going to show right now, inshallah, that the whole purpose of the podcast was to talk about Tamir. It's not about the specific individual. 
Now, in in in, in the Dutch language, uh, we have a, st a statement where they say, when you make a statement, you say someone something, and you uh, criticize a certain characteristic, and someone gets all agitated. Uh, the Dutch they say, "Waarom voel je aangesproken?" Like, why do you feel like you're being addressed? You know that itself. You know, it's it speaks volumes. Like, why is it when we did a podcast on Tamir, all of a sudden you feel like we're talking about Fulan or Alan? That is something you have to ask yourself, and that is something you have to ask that individual. Why our statements resonated that much with uh, uh, what you think of the individual? Either your perception of the individual is wrong. Or your perception is right based on what you've heard, which means going to the individual and ask him. You know, uh, we heard these statements from the Salaf, but I've seen you opposing it. What is your response to that? You shouldn't come and criticize us for clarifying the truth. The truth has to be clarified. The truth will be said, regardless of how people feel and, and what implications and connections you want to make. <laughs> that goes back to you. <laughs> nah. So before I, I jump in and give my feedback on a on on comment, let's go ahead and start. Um looking at the video inshallah so we can we can get our statements out the way of what we actually said okay so let me go ahead and start with this one and let me know if you can hear it yeah today's just an introduction to the topic and you can hear it right yeah and we hope to you know try our best over a, maybe with however long time it may take a few weeks whatever the case may be no. to give the topic its due justice so uh again just reiterating this is something that we've honestly been talking want to go through for some time it's not connected to anybody even though i've seen things going about about people some this person be mama yeah this person to have in tim yeah etc well i uh, it's something that's been on our, our list for some time <laughs> okay so let's just stop right there <laughs> let's just stop right there and we'll come back to where we left off here before we even get any further i clearly said this is not connected to anybody okay this is not something that we're addressing with somebody specifically okay However, it's a topic that we wanted to discuss. It's a topic that we wanted to clarify. If somebody's being accused of something or somebody is, um, you know, being possibly even labeled something, it doesn't stop us from clarifying terminology surrounding around that topic. It's no problem yeah. to still state the truth and be clear about what's, how we should understand this terminology. Actually, it's better for us to understand if that accusation may be uh, false or it may be more in line with the truth. Okay, and then we go on to clarify even more, right? So let's go ahead. Um, yeah, so you mentioned here the main point is we wanted to talk about the topic of the <laughs> and even if month. Exactly. It's something exactly. to talk about for months. It's not something that, hey, we decided to do now. We wanted to do it for months, and it was something on our uh, to do list. We're like, now. Nah. Exactly. Now let's go ahead and finish. It was rest. because of whatever somebody is doing. I mean, this is what the podcast is for. We look to clarify issues that people are dealing with. No, we're not. And... Look, we're never going to be shy about actually addressing the elephant in the room or talking about something that is con actually happening on the Sahara. As a matter of fact, me and you agreed, and we talked about this many times that we're going to talk about contemporary issues. We we don't mind that. And to address the yeah. elephant in the room, yes, Abu Taymi did the five-hour podcast, right? And Allah. All right. Um, so stop right there because the people have found some type of issues with the fact that the name was brought up, okay? Yeah, but I His think you should finish the clip. You should, yeah, if you continue, gonna, gonna, yeah, yeah, go ahead. That's what I said about it, more. Sah, but we're not going to talk about the podcast. I haven't listened to it, I, I haven't said watched that, not okay, not one minute of it, exactly. So we don't have that luxury yet, you know, but that's not even the point. The point is, right. We're going to talk about Tamir as the scholars talk about it. We're going to talk about Tamir based on the books of the Salaf, right? Then take that, and those of you that have watched it, yes, or those of you, whatever, that, that, that want to have clarity on the issue, then this is what you can use. All right. I think that's the point of that kind of gets out. So we understand okay. that the name was brought up for, for one reason, and that was actually to do justice, right? In this clip, we actually are saying, I mean, being honest and saying we have not watched that. So we cannot comment on that. We cannot discuss that. We cannot refer this back to him, which shows even more that we have no intention of connecting it to him because we haven't seen it. We're talking about Tamir as a general. So if anything, we did the individual, the brother, justice by saying, hey, we can't talk about it. Okay, well, so I, how I in the world... <clears throat> I don't so understand how in the world now people... it, it, 
how in the world are we being connected to, you know, um, hey, you mentioned his name and that was wrong, et cetera. And I'm saying we mentioned in a particular context. I went back and listened to the podcast and I will say out of the mistakes that I made with this podcast, usually, you know me, bro. I watched the podcast maybe over and over at least five times before I actually put it out um, just to check and see, you know, make sure everything's OK. Um, this time I didn't. I didn't do that because I had work and I was busy with other things. So we just <laughs> which is which is alhamdulillah, <laughs> you know, so. Um, when I, people are saying this, I went back and listened to it over and over, you know, and I'm like, we all, the name was only mentioned one time. And that's the instance that it was mentioned in this particular clip right here. I, I mean, I mean, one minute, one minute, one minute. Let, let, let's, let's get it straight, right? Just if, for those that still can't get it. And it seems a lot of people just got triggered when they heard the name, the system shut down, right? Listen to the clip. The whole reason we mentioned his name so that you don't make that connection. That's the whole reason exactly. we mentioned. We said we know there's a podcast out there. We know there's an elephant in the room. But this is not, this episode's not about that podcast because we didn't watch it. How can someone then turn around and be like, how can you talk about this podcast if you haven't watched it? Yeah, we said we didn't watch, we said we're not talking about the podcast because we didn't watch it. How can you exactly. say, <laughs> and criticize and say, how can you talk about the podcast if you didn't watch it? I just, I don't understand, Akhi. Wallahi, Akhi, this love of in individuals and personalities, it blinds people, Akhi. It just blinds them. They literally, they don't even hear things anymore. They hear the exact opposite of what you say, Allah al And the yeah. whole reason we mentioned Mehman's name, like you mentioned, is to do justice to the situation and to say that, hey, we're talking about Tamir, generally speaking, right? And it's not about that podcast that came out recently that has been accused of being a, 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 a podcast full of Tamir. That is something that we can only judge if we watch the podcast, which we haven't. No, exactly. I, I think that's that's pretty clear. I mean, and hopefully that helps clarify people who may have uh, misunderstood that part. Now, I can't really say how many people have, but I just seen like I have people who messaged me on the side and I just felt like, OK, maybe this needs to get clarified a little bit more. Now, uh, let's go on to and I don't want to spend too, too much time on this, honestly. I just want to make sure we clarify some things from the last podcast and then move on to the main topic of today. Um, I don't really like the like dealing with these type of things like this. Um, yeah. Let's go on to the next the next clip. Um, now and we didn't right, label him Mumeya, by the way. By the way, the person that said label him Mumeya, we challenged him. That's the one time he mentioned his name for the reason the way he said. And we challenged yes. him to point out where we have actually labeled them as Mumeya. Again, Akhi, people, when they go into defense mode, we'll talk about that later, the dangers of this uh, getting stuck to personalities. When they go into defense mode, Akhi, they don't hear what you say. On top of that, they hear things that you haven't said. <laughs> Along they, with that. It's yeah. crazy. So, so, hey. so let's go ahead and, um, let's go ahead and pull this up. Uh, is the volume too loud on your end? Yeah, it's, it's between. It's, where's the middle? I'm sorry, say it again. It is a bit loud, yeah. All right, all right, let me go ahead and turn it down a little bit. All right. <clears throat> so this is the second clip. And this this clip right here, I think it's around like the, um, what is it? Let me, let me see. This is around the 57-minute mark. 57-minute mark to 58, 59-minute mark. Um, let's go ahead and play it. No path between this, between someone wow. saying that, Tim uh, Yeer, you guys are saying this person who's diluting the truth it is you know he's mutasahil I and mean, he's somebody who's easygoing but then really you're applying shidda on the other end by mm -hmm. you know applying things maybe in its not necessary context or going overboard mm -hmm. than what's necessarily stated in the text now nah, so you'll find that typically Akhi, i don't know about you but 100 mm. percent i've been accused of both <laughs> all right 100 <laughs> percent. if you try to you be know, you, you, actually, you know i've been accused of both <laughs> exactly some will say you're mumayya, some say La, you're so at the end of the day at the end of the day this is it doesn't go back to our feelings our emotions and our personal opinions mm. right we're talking about a religious topic this has a a religious reality so, mm -hmm. so the question yeah. really is what is the religious in the Quran and Sunnah, what is the middle path? Because we all know that Allah says, Allah made us mm. the middle, the nation of the middle path, right? But this middle path is that which is in accordance with the Quran and the Sunnah. That is the wasat, right? All right. 
I think that's enough for that one. I think that gets the point across of what we were discussing here. So we yeah. clearly say in here, right, in defense of anybody who may have, who may even think that we're talking about um, somebody specific and naming them things, we're saying, look, even we have been accused of this before. Probably till today, we might still be being accused of it. You know, I've been accused of a lot of things. And as a student, that's not something I jeep. That's going to happen. You're going to get accused of a lot of things. You're going to get accused of being a hisbi. You get accused of being, you know, maybe a khadiji, a wahhabi, a sorori, whatever. You know, they might, somebody might come and look at something you say and then try to automatically name it. Hey, he's a momayir. Why? Because he clarified it like this. And so-and-so explains it like this. That happens. So I bring that up to say, like, it could be injustice. You have to look at you know, all of the delete in its essence, and then also uh, take it back to the scholars. And I think this was a reoccurring theme that we just can to continue talking about throughout the same, the same podcast. Yeah, I mean, I think the importance really of that one point, Akhi, of mentioning that, you know, that uh, even we get accused of Tamir or sometimes Tashuddud or whatever, the importance here is that, and this is advice that I have really for everyone, which is beware of falling into this mentality of the whole, it's them against us mentality. Right, because that will cloud your judgments, and that's what's happening a lot of time on YouTube. So this person he refutes this guy, and then that guy he does another refutation, and then what happens is that when you come along and you clarify the truth, yes, people are going to think that you've took sides. They're going to say, "Oh, so anyone that criticizes your sheikh, even if it's a legitimate criticism, he's going to turn into your enemy because you're going to think he sided with the other side." No, I mean, any honestly, on on a any reality basis there are people who are on an extreme of tashadud yes and who want to label everyone as mumayya and there are there's a, people who are extreme who um, go beyond bounds right but that doesn't mean now that uh, if if someone is criticized for something then all of a sudden you took the other side right or whatever okay. so the point i'm trying to make is that this whole mentality of is us against them you're going to become, again, two-dimensional. Everything's either for you or against you. Nah, that's not how it is, Akhi. Step mm -hmm. out of the whole drama. Step out of the whole, you know, the, the, the fight. Yes? And look at things from an objective perspective, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's why, again, like I said, we're not free ourselves of, of those accusations, but so that your logic and your thinking straight and, and your objectivity doesn't go away, do not allow to be guided by emotions. Okay, 100%, so that you want to extreme love or extreme hate that you love this one so much, and the way he's portrayed the others, you hate them so much that anything, yes, that remotely resembles what your enemy says, it has to be batil. And subhanallah, the as an example, the Sufia they use this tactic a lot. I mean, all the people of batil they use it, but as an example, for example, when Sufis want to warn against what they call Wahhabis, yes, what do they do? They pro they portray the whole us against them by trying to fit us in with ISIS. They say, look, ISIS, they uh, support Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab. Right? Mm -hmm. So everyone who supports Muhammad Abdul Wahab is ISIS. No, that's not mm -hmm. the case. Okay? So so everyone who warns against Tamiyya or warns against something that is wrong, it doesn't mean all of a sudden, oh, they are with the other faction or the other group and they're on the other extreme. No. S step out of the whole drama. Step out of the, take your emotions out of it and just look at the adilla, look at the Quran and the Sunnah. And then ask yourself, what's the ruling of this? What have the scholars said about it in accordance with the Quran and the Sunnah? Okay, does this person exhibit these characteristics? Yes or no? If he does, then it depends. It depends on the mistake. If the mistake is a very bad mistake and the person he is um, calling to it and holding on to it, okay, then. Wala and Bara gets involved if it's Sunnah and Bid'ah. If the mistake doesn't reach the level of Sunnah and Bid'ah, it's just a personal flaw or a flaw in a person's uh, religion that is underneath Bid'ah and it doesn't reach him to the way of Bid'ah, then again, take the measures that need to be taken. But again, stay out of these uh, feuds, if you like, because your emotions will get involved. Once your emotions get involved, your whole judgment becomes cloudy. Wallahu mustaan. No, I'm just like, okay. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I think we clarified that enough. Let's move on to the next one. And, and this is going to be the last clip. I was going to go through a few other things, but I think this should be the last one, to be honest, unless you want to go through another one. So let's look at oh, this no, one. This one right here, this one right here, I think this drives the point home because this is something that we reiterate in every single podcast. Every single podcast, we say pretty much the same thing regarding these topics. When we're talking about 
uh, asma wal ahkam, you know, names and the rulings. And we even did a whole podcast dedicated to this. I would I would advise maybe people who might be new to the channel to go back and watch that. Or maybe if you have watched it, revisit it and look at our position when it comes to asma wal ahkam and the position of, you know, uh, that we hold to be true when dealing with such matters. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at this video um, where I think, again, it drives a point home of, you know, what we are trying to explain. Uh, I think that's yeah. a good, um, I think you bring up a good topic or a good um, tenbih, so to say, regarding these topics. And that is that we're talking about it from the Islamic perspective and just giving guidelines. But when it comes to actually establishing the ruling on the individual, then this goes back to the people of knowledge. It goes back to the scholars. It needs to be asked and investigated. So these are just different signs that you can look at. Uh, we have to always give that precursor no matter what we're talking about because you you don't have <laughs> you don't want people going and establishing you know different asma wal ahkam on people so and so is a bid'ah or mubtada' so and so is a kafir so and so is a munafiq so and so is you know yani go back to ahl al-in the people of knowledge when it comes to this no absolutely I agree with you 100% and and that's really what it's about here we're just establishing the groundwork no right exactly we're talking about bro I don't I don't think it gets more clear than that <laughs> I, don't, I don't think yeah. it gets. I don't. I don't think it gets more clear than that as far as what we were trying to do, and what we we're trying That's to lay out. Clear. Um, I would like to add one thing, okay, yeah. for the sake of clarification, right? Uh, we mentioned, like you said, Abu Taymi's name only once for the reasons that we did, which was so that people they don't uh, make those correlations, uh, and also towards the end, I remember we talked about um, uh, taking pictures with Al Bida and the likes. Now. Yes, I did have something in mind um, that, um, especially when I talked about the approach um, regarding if someone takes a picture of you with Ahl Bid'ah, how would you approach it? Uh, yes, of course, La Shak, that does relate, but that was in a tweet, not the podcast, right? So again, it has nothing to do with the podcast. It's something that was in a tweet before, which um, um, I think... Uh, if you want to show it on the screen, you can do. But the point, the whole point was, it wasn't even criticizing him for that picture having being taken because he had his explanations. He didn't, he whatever the explanations were, that's for him to clarify, right? And that's not what it was about. It was rather about the approach, the approach of sharing pictures of some scholars, yes, who had pictures taken with them with Ahlul Bid'ah, right? And then. Um, using that and sending that on Twitter, yes. And I said that, and I even put myself in that situation, Akhi, just to make sure people they don't huh, get their emotions involved. I said, Imagine Abdul Hamid, if this had happened to me, I would have done X, Y, and Z. And I mentioned that the first thing I would have done is I would have clarified the ruling of getting cozy with the Bid'ah and taking pictures with them. That's the first thing I would have done, so people are not confused, right? And after that, I said. Then I would clarify my excuse, yes, but I would not cite scholars. Why? Because why would I cite scholars? Is it because I hold it to be permissible to take pictures of Ahl bidah If that's the case, then speak up and bring your proof. Or is it that I'm trying to say this scholar has done it? Yes. Why are people criticizing me? Which again is something uh, the, which today's podcast is about anyway, which is how to deal with the mistakes of the scholars. So for the sake of transparency, I wanted to point that out. Yes. Uh, that people might say that was too specific, right? Mm -hmm. That was too specific. He must have meant brother or whatever. Well, in reality, yes, I had his, I had his tweet in mind. Yes, but again, I kept his name out of it and I put myself in a situation. Why? For the exact reason that we mentioned earlier, which is we don't want your emotions to get involved. This is not about individuals and personalities. This is about the haq. Yes, I don't want some people to go into shut down self-defense mode and throw the baby out of the bathwater like they say. Like they say. Just because yeah. the sheikh has been mentioned, yes? And at the same time, I don't want people to think that it's personal. I don't want people to think that this is only relates to him. No. If you have the qaida, you have the groundwork, you have the proof, then this is something that will stay with you forever. And that's the benefit of talking about the haq and the adilla. Why? Because people can change, yaqi. Yes? One person that you hold today to be upon the sunnah and salafi, tomorrow can become what? May Allah protect us. He, he yeah. can be misguided. Likewise, someone that today you might be too, putting too much effort into, uh, if you like, character assassin, assassinating, like some people do, may Allah protect us. Yes, it might turn out tomorrow, huh? he's he's on your side, right? So that's, there's, there's no benefit in that, except if there's a reason for it. But for the rest, the best thing for you 
my dear brother, my dear sister, again, is to learn the haqq and you'll know its people as much as people change. Because people will never stay the same. Yes, people change all the time. Okay, and the narrations regarding that are many. So for the sake of transparency, I wanted to point that out. But for the rest, everything else that we had said, it stands. And I think that's a good point that takes us yeah. to the next topics, inshallah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jazakallah khair for pointing that out. And also, uh, why you point that out, I want to make sure I clarify. When you were mentioning it, I didn't even know exactly what you were talking about. I, I, I no. thought you were, I had something else in mind about something completely different. So when you were talking about it, like you said, you were mentioning a tweet and you were you had a tweet in mind, but I was literally, my, my brain was thinking about something older. And and I was like, you know, it went over my head, honestly. Um, so when people are saying that that's what you were attending with this, I was definitely thrown off because I'm like, huh? Like I, I didn't even, I didn't even see it. Until now, you sent me the tweet just now uh, in the group, but I haven't read it. I haven't opened it. I told you that before we even started the podcast. I haven't read it. I haven't looked at it. Um, no. So... Yeah, I mean I, I that was the, that was the gist of the tweet anyway. But the, really, the point here is what it's it's not about the person; it's about the stance; it's about how things should be done. And again, it's related to today's topic, which is how to deal with scholars' mistakes. We do not publish scholars' mistakes on Twitter to prove a point. That's definitely something that we don't do, right? Scholars' mistakes—that's not how we treat it, and that's not how we go about. And then that's part of our topic today. Yeah, that's part of and, our and that's, that's by the way, that's by the way, that's by the way, assuming that it's a mistake. But having said that, those pictures actually have got nothing to do with the whole situation. Why? Because the two particular scholars were the Mufti and Sheikh Saleh Al Sheikh. These are Mufti. I mean, no, just regarding the particular situation, this is a different mm. situation altogether. Them taking pictures at a certain nadwa or certain occasion that's international, done by the uh, by the state. We mentioned that in last podcast as well. That's a completely that's comparing apples with oranges. Got nothing to do with that. Oh yeah. So let's go ahead and, and jump into the um, you know, some of the comments that was that I had already read it earlier, but I just want to look at it again now after we have already uh listened to that clip. So let me go ahead and put that on uh on the screen for everyone to see. All right, you see it, right? Yeah. So like I said, I replied back to the person by saying what uh, that the main the main goal of the video was to provide a clear understanding of Tamiyyah, which inshallah I hope that we were able to accomplish. If you found it helpful, alhamdulillah, feel free to show support by, by well, liking the video. I mean, yeah, sorry. Yeah, on, 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 on the other hand, uh, on the other hand, if you didn't find it informative, that's perfectly fine too. Your feedback is valuable, and I honestly truly mean that. The feedback is valuable because now you allow us to maybe clarify something that maybe somebody else had the same understanding as you, which uh, based upon some of the message I received, maybe there were some people who didn't quite see uh, the point for what it was. So it needs clarified. It's informative. It's important to clarify that if we believe someone exhibited characters of Mumeya, we would address it directly. One hundred percent. We don't shy away from um, taking the particular issue of an individual, uh, understanding it, taking it to a scholar and then asking them to judge for us and see if it's proper or not you know at the end of the day we may say we may think something but it's always important to go ahead and get feedback from the people of knowledge so again we if we and then we get that feedback and somebody says yes that's this is indeed that we, we, we there's no need for ambiguity so may allah bless you how however i want to emphasize that this uh in this instance we neither stated nor implied such a uh, uh uh designation as clearly stated in the podcast then uh he went on to reply and this is the point that i really want to discuss um he says i mean going through the terminology of Tamiya and then saying that this is the characters of a person who sits with the that's something abu Tamiya is being challenged for not just abu Tamiya. a lot of people have been challenged for this okay it's not something that is specific to uh your teacher or abu Tamiya or the brother it's something that a lot of people get challenged for you know it's something that it happens but with the with regards to that we still need to align it with the nasus kitab and sunnah okay I think enough, when, he, when he says here sorry when he says he's being challenged for you know you have to look carefully at the words the brother did not say mm. he's being accused of which means he agrees that abu taim he actually sits with al bidah yes he actually sits with al bidah and he colla collaborates with them and cooperates with them in their seminars and and and, and their lectures there was just a reason why that was going out with people who are not upon the sunnah He's saying he's being challenged for that. Well, Akhi, if that's the case, if he does it, he'll be that. Of course, he'll be challenged for that. Why not? What's the point then of of the 
sunnah and and what you have what's it called the um, all the narrations that we're mentioning but i mean i think that that word speaks volumes is being challenged for if he's being challenged for that if that's he's, he's he actually does that and he's being criticized for that then that's a criticism in its place now yeah and then you look at it and like to be honest i don't know exactly what you're referring to um because yeah. i just i don't i don't follow the situation to that extent uh, again i like yeah. dealing with messiah i like dealing with yeah. you know uh this is what this is what's intriguing to me i liked you know being a student this is something or being even a new muslim in the beginning this was always something which was intriguing to me looking at the delete looking at quran and sunnah looking at that in line with what somebody might say is right or wrong okay so this hasn't i don't know who what's being referred to as far as anyway but i'm not exactly sure in in, in totality i have an idea but i can't really comment on it so it says sets up the viewer's mind to think uh that way um and it's and it is dangerous why is it dangerous? It's either true or not. I, I don't. It's what's dangerous about it. If it's true, then it's uh, in its mahal, and it's something that needs to be discussed. And hopefully, the brother can be advised, um, and other people can stay away. Now, if it's something which is uh, not true, then it can be discussed, and it can be and it brought to light why it's not true, and people can still learn the correct way of the setup uh, in applying such a, a matter. No. Especially as especially as you guys claim that you tackle contemporary issues, which we were talking about. Tim, yeah, is a contemporary issue, and we dealt with. Uh, what you're basically saying is, if sh if the shoe fits, uh, which is in fact the indirect refutation. I wouldn't say that. What I would say is, we need to add a little bit more terminology to this. If the shoe fits, okay. If the shoe fits, we say that you need to take that shoe, okay, <laughs> take it to somebody specific who deals with these affairs or somebody who is more knowledgeable and then say, hey, Sheikh, what do you think about this? And then let them yani, give you, present the issue to you. What we do on this platform, and as I, I talked to you before, what we do on this platform with Tibian is clarify issues, okay? Just like if you were doing some online shopping and you want to get something, right? You know how it has the details, it has the length of the, the shoulders, you're buying a shirt, a kameez, it has the length of the shoulders, it has the color, it has the fabric, it has the price, it has how it should fit, etc. right? You get it, you order it, and it may fit and it may not fit. It may fit and it may not fit. Because why? You got it off the line and you got the details and characters, but it, it just may not fit. So what do you do? You take it to that tailor and you say, hey, does this fit properly or not fit properly? And that's what the scholars are. Okay. And they're going to tell you, yes, 100% this fits in this particular situation or 100% it doesn't. I think it's very clear. Okay. Yeah. It's very clear. This is what we do. And we try to clarify that. We try to do this. Man, I'll make it easy. Yeah. And except from us all. And that's what we did with that, top, that topic of uh a 10 year now my my uh something that comes to my attention is i'm wondering uh maybe maybe it is the case that this person has you know looked at that podcast and maybe he sees some type of things that line up maybe if that's the case then we advise you to do that take it to the scholars and see hey does this line up is this true is this right you know because things can be taken out of its context or used mis uh, appropriately uh, inappropriate in an appropriate man inappropriate manner um so sure. it's important to make sure you check and see um uh, yani, far, far yeah, from your clear. far from your imaginations and far from the connections that you draw question is do you have criticism on the content Ahlan wa sahlan. Wallahi, we welcome it with open arms Sorry. you don't have criticism on the content on the adilla that have been brought or the likes then you go and do your homework <laughs> i mean because it, that's up to you <laughs> What, what we got to be careful is what people, the person's kind of saying is like, and this is how I, how it could be understood. It could be understood like, hey, so-and-so is being talked about regarding this. So, yeah, don't talk about this topic. Why? Because Too automatically, so, automatically so-and-so is going to be aligned and you're going to be looked at as this. And it's like. And he's going to be upset. Like, and he's going to be upset. Yeah, yeah, things don't work like that. It doesn't what work comes like first, that. Dahi? What comes first, Dahi? Clarifying the truth. And preserving the truth and the people's aqidah and their manhaj or preserving people's feelings and what people might think. Exactly. Exactly. It's so it's it's really a no-brainer when you look at it in that in that light. And hopefully we can look at these affairs and take our emotions and our personal beliefs and our personal, you know, attitudes towards things, take them and put them to the side. And just look at Quran and Sunnah. Look at the situation for what it is with factual evidence and then make a judgment. You know, make I mean, what, I, what I learned from this, Akhi, what I learned from this experience is that and we knew this before, but you can never please people, right? And this is a very good example. 
Why? Because if you talk generally, they say it's an indirect attack. <laughs> and yeah. if you if you go direct, you know, you do a reputation by name, they say it's a witch hunt. <laughs> what do we do then? Yeah, you know, you just let, let, let's be quiet, let people live in confusion. Yeah, I need that say, khalas, <laughs> give up. Sahih, sahih. Allah understand. So let's go ahead and jump right into the um the main topic, and that is dealing with the mistakes of scholars. So um, like I said earlier, uh when I was introducing this, you know, this is a, a topic that is the main topic for today is very important. Um, the subject is extremely significant in, you know, how we seek when we're seeking knowledge and our growth and understanding as Muslims. So again, scholars, no matter how distinguished they may be, they're not infallible. We know this. Okay. So today we'll be exploring and looking at different aspects, you know, connected to this topic. Um, and what is the proper path to take according to Quran? And Sunnah. So, uh, Muhammad, I'll let you lead, and then I'll follow up after you, inshallah ta'ala. Did you have something you want to put on the screen, or? Uh, yeah, akhi, mainly, to be honest, there's two things <clears throat> today that I want to share. Uh, one is a book. I think I mentioned it last time, by Sheikh Islam Nitaimi, rahimahullah ta'ala, uh, titled, Raf'ul Malam an al Aimat al Alam. No. A beautiful book. It's one of the books, mashallah, tabarakallah that I believe every Muslim, you know, should read this book. Why? Because it's something that deals with something that is the cause for so much fitan and, and problems, which is scholars' mistakes, right? And this book, the title of it is uh, Lifting the Blame from the Illustrious uh, Imams. Yes? Um, and the whole purpose of the book Sheikh Abdul Salam Allah. He's got actually got a six minute summary of the whole book. A six minute summary of the whole book. And I went through that summary and I extracted uh, what the Sheikh was saying uh, in summarizing that book. Okay. Uh, let me share that quickly. Bismillah. Okay. So, this is the link, by the way, the link to the video. There's the link to the video. Everyone wants to watch it. The Sheikh mentioned at the beginning that the main objective, and you can see my screen, I hope. Mm -hmm. The Sheikh mentions that the main objective of the book is to establish the valid excuses scholars have for sometimes opposing the text of a hadith. Right? So the hadith and the ayat, as we know, uh, some scholars, they have weak opinions, right? And sometimes their statements go directly against an authentic hadith. So one might have these questions pop into his mind, which this book answers, inshallah, which is first and foremost, are scholars free from making mistakes? Well, the answer, of course, is no. <laughs> and the whole title shows you that, yes, there are scholars that have made mistakes and they have opposed a hadith. Okay? And the other question is, are they excused for such mistakes? Right? And the answer is absolutely yes, they're excused for that mistake. But then one might say, okay, well, why would scholars even differ and oppose a hadith if all if all of the scholars of the sunnah, they rely on Quran and hadith? What's the reason behind them actually differing? That's really what the book is about. Because one might say, and this happens, Akhi Allah subhanAllah, you come to someone and you say to him that the... Uh, the truth in this matter is X, Y, and Z. The Prophet Muhammad said, you bring him the hadith based on the opinion of the of other imams. Then he says to you, uh, you know, but Imam Fulan doesn't know. Blah. And, and they kind of like want to make it come across as if some kind of uh, attack of you upon upon the imam or that scholar by saying that he made a mistake. La. Scholars, they do make mistakes. However, the scholars, especially the scholars of the sunnah, they have excuses. There's reasons why they fall into those mistakes. And that's what Shaykh al-Sabni Taymi rahimahullah has done in this book. He has covered and mentioned 10 reasons why a scholar might actually oppose a hadith for which he is excused. 10 reasons. And these 10 reasons can be um, grouped into three. Three main reasons under which come other reasons. First one being that they don't even believe the Prophet Muhammad said it. Right? They don't believe they even said it. Okay? So like Shaykh Falah always used to say, Yes. Uh, so first, for, it's not even established for them. The Prophet ﷺ said it, such that you can accuse them of opposing the hadith. And we'll talk about the reasons why uh, that is. Now, so the first one is: Did the Prophet ﷺ say it? 
uh, they don't even believe that he وسلم, said it. Or it could be that they believe and they know the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, the Prophet وسلم, said it and the hadith is authentic, but it does they don't believe it applies to this particular mas'ala. Okay, their understanding of the hadith for them doesn't apply to this mas'ala. Or it could be that finally that they know that the Prophet said it, but they believe that it's either abrogated or that the actual hadith is weak. Okay, so those are the main reasons under which come the 10 reasons that we talked about. Uh, like we said, the first one, why they might not believe the Prophet said it, is because it didn't reach him. It didn't reach the scholar. The scholar didn't even hear about the hadith. Okay, that's possible. And Sheikh Sam Taimi, he, start, he gives examples, and guess what? He starts with the four caliphs, with the Khulafa al Rashidin, showing you situations in which they opposed the hadith because the hadith did not reach them. And then what did they do when the hadith reached them and how they changed their stance after the hadith had reached them? Or it could be that it reached them, the hadith, but it reached them without a chain. Or it could be that it reached them with a chain, but they thought that the chain was weak. Or it could be that the hadith reached them with an authentic chain, but they rejected it due to some other principles that scholars mention. Or it could be, and this is also very valid, that a lot of people, you know, they find difficult to accept or to understand or to fathom, which is the scholar has forgot. He knew about the hadith, but he forgot. And the most uh, famous narration I can think of regarding that is the hadith or the uh, narration what happened between Umar radiallahu anhu and Ammar when it comes to tayammum. <clears throat> A whole hadith, Ammar is telling Umar, Umar, remember we mean you went out and uh, I had janaba and I didn't know what to do and I literally rolled around in the sand and then we came to the Prophet and he said, it was only enough for you to do this and this and then Umar said he forgot if that's what you say that happened the Umar radiallahu anhu completely forgot about that hadith so that also is uh, possible and the other one uh, the third one the second main reason which is the Prophet said it but it doesn't, doesn't apply to this um, then um, this could be because of their understanding of the implications of the hadith is different they don't think that the hadith actually applies to this or his rejecting of the implication so different thing this is that um, he doesn't understand the Dilala and this one he understands it but he rejects it and he doesn't accept it or it could be that it opposes the implication of another hadith there's another reason which is there's another hadith that has an implication or a Dilala that opposes what you supposedly understand from this hadith so then the scholars they go into the issue of Tarjih and, and, they, and, and they look at which hadith is more correct of course, the hadith themselves, they're wahi, they don't oppose each other, but according to our understanding or lack of knowledge, it might seem as if they oppose each other when that's not really the case. And that's why some scholars, this is where their, mashallah, their true ilm comes out, such as Ibn Taymiyyah, whereby they manage to combine between multiple hadith, which scholars thought for many centuries that they were actually opposing each other. That is something you teach Fadlullahi, you teach him and And finally, um, when they believe the Prophet actually said it, uh, but they believe that's abrogated or weak, it could be for two reasons. Number one, the hadith opposes another authentic proof, either from the Quran or Sunnah Rijma'ah. So that might cause them to reject the hadith. Um, or the hadith opposes another hadith that he believes to be authentic, um, which are both uh, kind of uh, roughly the same. Um, but that's basically a summary of the book. Now, the important part is that we take away the answers. Now we have the answers to the questions that we had. Remember those questions we had earlier? Which is, why do scholars differ? This is why sometimes mm. scholars they differ. And the reason why it's important to know this is because people, when it comes to scholars and their mistakes, unfortunately, they fall into one of two extremes. Mm. One of two extremes. The first extreme are those people, unfortunately, who don't are not even convinced that their sheikh can make a mistake. Mm. They believe in some level of, even if they don't explicitly say, they act like as if the sheikh can't make a mistake. Mm -hmm. Right? Which means that <clears throat> when you point out that sheikh's mistake or you disagree with the sheikh, they say you're attacking the sheikh. They mm -hmm. see it as an attack. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's one extreme. May Allah Ta'ala protect us. So this book obviously deals with that. When you see... Yeah, and, uh, nah, let me... Let me. Uh, let me just add to that point because that's literally one of the points I was going to bring up as far as the two extremes. The first one you're mentioning right here is like uh, when it comes to following up the mistakes of the scholar, you know, the tepas and that, the ulama, 
do you have two extremes like you just mentioned this one you're talking about is like a, a form of ifrat yani it's being like excessive now you're taking that that mistake and you're starting to build off of that mistake instead of clarifying the truth you're building up because you have to defend your sheikh you have to defend mm -hmm. him so you're still looking for aqwal to support that mistake and it might be because maybe to asup maybe you're you know you're you're blindly following the scholar you know you're extremely attached to the scholar maybe because the scholar is very well known his shuhra uh or you feel like you know because he's the one who taught you specifically you have some type of emotional connection so you start building off of how that statement is correct versus looking at it in light of the Quran and Sunnah and saying wait maybe we should review this so that's the first form that you're talking about right now no, no. definitely and and this sometimes it doesn't happen Look, sometimes it happens, it doesn't happen a lot in the absolute sense, whereby someone takes his scholar, the scholar statement in every field. But unfortunately, we see in this day and age, people go to extremes when it comes to that scholar and his field. For example, when it comes to Tasheeh, for example, yes, there are some people that, when it comes to Sheikh Al-Albani, rahimahullah, they find it difficult to accept or to even fathom that maybe the Sheikh made a mistake in some of the Tasheeh had, right? When in essence, Ya Akhi, Sheikh Albani himself, Taraja, <laughs> he himself, there are hadith which he considered to be Sahih and then he later on changed and said that Daif and, and, and vice versa. That's the biggest proof, right? Some people, they go to extremes in this when it comes to Jarah al Ta'adil. They'll say to, okay, this Sheikh, he's not maybe the most knowledgeable or whatever, but you know what? He is Imam Jarah al Ta'adil, right? He can't make a mistake when it comes to his judgments in individuals. Yes, and when it comes to judgment individuals, we have to go back to the Shaykh in everything because he is the Imam in that regard. La, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter what his level is in that field, he can still make a mistake. So some people, they find it difficult to fathom such a thing. Some, they do it in fiqh. For example, they be like, okay, our scholar, when it comes to fiqh, some scholars said that he's the most faqih and they said these things about him, that means he's going to be a reference point in terms of khilaf. No scholar happens, is ever yeah. a reference Every point. Step. No, nah, mm -hmm. no scholar is ever a reference point when it comes to khilaf amongst the scholars. When it comes to khilaf amongst important. the scholars, we look at the dalil. We don't look at the scholar's station or his age or, or these sort of things. No, nah. and I think it's important to mention, Baruch Allah, that even these scholars themselves, from what we know of these scholars and from their own statements, they won't be pleased with such a thing. They won't be pleased mm -hmm. as you using them a reference point in one particular science, I mean, absolutely, I mean, and not questioning and not looking at their speech again with Quran and Sunnah. Um, and there was a famous statement of Imam al-Shafi. He said, if my statement goes, if look at my statements and my what I'm teaching, it goes anything against the a hadith of the Prophet. And I'm going to throw it against the wall. And they throw it out. You know, and this is how we should be dealing with, especially the Muasirin. You know, um, if this is an Imam, you know, he has a whole madhab named after him. You know, and he's saying this, then we understand that the Salaf, how they used to incorporate this type of belief uh moving forward. So now in this day and age, you see statements of scholars saying, you know, uh or defending people who take their statements and say, you know, these different type of praises and you must follow them in such a manner. And it's not befitting. They themselves refute it. No. Yeah, so that's when it comes to that. So that scholar now with that status in his field where he is, mashallah, the top person of that field, he is still prone to making mistakes. Now, if he no. makes a mistake and the scholars, they deal with it, it is not an attack on the sheikh. It doesn't okay. take away from him. Rather, this okay. is something normal. And this yeah. book will benefit you in a sense that when you read this book and you see how some of the Khulafa al-Rashidun made mistakes and forgot things, and other Imams, because Ibn Taymi gives many examples, then Allah that will cure you of this disease that you have whereby you believe that your Shaykh can't make a mistake. If no. these illustrious Imams have made mistakes, then how about my sheikh in the 14th century? Of course, he can also make a mistake. It is wrong for me. It's a misguidance and a ta'asub on my part to believe that my sheikh can't make a mistake. Let me look back at the both sides and the adilla on both sides. Hopefully, that'll be Jimmy. a cure for you. Jimmy, that, now, that was the first part you mentioned. Yeah, that's the first extreme. Now, the second extreme. Yeah. Uh, the second extreme are those people that uh, they believe that if a scholar falls into a mistake, it's somehow um, drop, we drop the scholar now. Right. Okay. Exactly. So again, it goes back to the same thing again, which is both, you know, subhanAllah, when it comes to extreme extremes, akhi, you'll find that they always have something in common, both extremes. Right. Mm -hmm. Both extremes have got something in common. Both of them. Both of them, what they have in common is they don't accept that a scholar can make a mistake. So for that reason, some have to say, okay, if we say he made a mistake, there's a ta'an upon him, we can't allow people to do ta'an on our shaykh. 
let's dismiss the mistake or let's defend the mistake. The other side, they say a scholar can't make a mistake, which means if this person made a mistake, then he's not a scholar. Those are the two extremes, right? La. So that's why if you read this book, and that's why that's why I made it the first question, which is it might sound too obvious, you know, which is can scholars make mistakes, right? It might sound too obvious, but that's the root of the problem. That's root no, of the problem. I just wanna I just wanted no. to add to that that, that that second one, the second extreme, which is a form of like tafrit almost, like a form of like being like negligent when dealing with the scholars and mistakes. And you go to another extreme, which is you start moving away from that scholar now. Okay. You start uh, and he started taking away from his honor and lowering his status with and warning against him uh, because of that uh, particular, uh, you know, zella, that's a particular mistake that he may have fallen into. And like you said already, both of these paths are extremes. Hopefully, both, of these, both no. of these paths are extremes. Now we can look at what is the what is the obligation uh, when it comes to uh, a student of knowledge when dealing with these extremes. Right? How does he deal with these two extremes? What's the path that we should take? And that is the path of following the Salaf al And just like in this Mas'ala or any other Mas'ala, which is you have respect and honor for the scholars. And you jilluhum, you keep them to a particular manner. You have you help them to be you know, noble. Um, and you yahfadu uh, karamatahum, and you protect their, 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 their honor and their status. Um, however, you clarify you clarify uh that mistake you clarify it with with dalila shari not by with, with what i think is correct or what so and so thinks is correct but dalila shari by way of quran and sunnah without you know without sugarcoating it or without you know looking down on a scholar you do it with with hikmah you do it with uh lot so to say you know you do it with you know easy going you do it um uh, in a way that you're far from anybody would interpret you of speaking ill of the scholar, you know, or uh, yeah, I need looking down on him in any way. Because zalat, they happen. This happens from the ulama, and it happened from people who are greater than our scholars today. With all yeah. due respect, it's happened from people who are greater. So it's going to definitely happen with us today, as the Prophet yeah. said. We're all Bani Adam, and <clears throat> the best of the Bani Adam is those who uh, make talba for the mistakes. Yeah. So if you look at it, Akhiv, from the perspective of both extremes, mm -hmm. on, on one side, uh, this, uh, I mean, like we said, both of them, they don't want to accept that their sheikh can make a mistake, right? Mm -hmm. But on an, another level as well, we have the ones who believe that if a scholar makes a mistake, he should be dropped. Now they'll accuse everyone else of what? Or defending batil, or sticking with a muhtadi or whatever, mm -hmm. or they'll label you. On the other side, those that believe what? That uh, a scholar, if he makes a mistake, yes, uh, that they don't accept that he can make a mistake. Well, they, they will label everyone else, yes, who, who clarifies as they're attacking our scholar. Mm -hmm. You see? So, subhanAllah, so, it's just something, the way that it's connected is, is, is subhanAllah's ajib. But and, and, and yeah. I just wanted to add to that. There is like a small tanbih, which is, yes, we with us saying this, it doesn't take away that there is some people out there. Yani yafrahu yani they're, they're happy when a scholar makes a mistake. Usually because they in their hearts, yani there's, it could be a sickness in their hearts where they themselves had something against that scholar. They themselves never really liked that scholar or that talib al-in. So when something comes up, some one type of mistake comes up, automatically you're throwing everything at them. See, he's this way. See, he's that way. And they're happy about it because they want to lower his status and speak about him. And now it's just like they got the green light, right? They, they feel like they got the green light because of this mistake that happens. But in reality, uh, the ulama, yani the ulama uh, can go into uh, something and he's it's an ishtihad. So it's a it's an ishtihad where a uh, mas'ala where he could be correct and he could be mistaken. The, the, the proof of Mandalia could be on his side in this particular ishtihad, or it could be against him. But we don't follow the mistakes and say, oh, look, he made that mistake. Nah, we say, as the person said, that he has ajr. I'm, you know, he has a reward. Either one reward or two rewards, based upon if he's right or if he's wrong. Yeah, so I just the, want to so add, the, that, add that the, to the point. Yeah, so the khulasa really is, like you mentioned, just kind of summarizing what you said regarding how to deal with it. It's very simple. الخطأ, the mistake is clarified and his honor is preserved simple as 
these two things don't oppose each other. These two things are not like water and fire, right? So, yeah. Clarifying a mistake is not vilifying a scholar. Mm-hmm. Clarifying a mistake is not vilifying a scholar. And it's not considered pr- protecting your sheikh, yes? Mm-hmm. Protecting your sheikh is not by letting his mistake slide. Mm-hmm. So both are wrong. You don't protect your sheikh's honor, yes, by uh, defending his mistakes. Okay? So Neither is you clarifying the mistakes considered a vilification of a scholar. Right? And again, the scholars, they talk about this. And I want to point this out, which is really, really important, which is, okay, all right, so are you guys trying to say that when it comes to a scholar having made, made a mistake or opposed the hadith, does that mean that me or you or anyone Tom, they can hear down the street can say, okay, the hadith says X, Y, and Z. The alim said this, this, and this. Okay, that's a scholar's mistake. Okay, that is, is that is that what it means basically? That if if anyone believes that a scholar imposed a hadith that khalas, that's a mistake. No, that's not what we're talking about. And like we said before, uh, not using the scholar's statements as proof, but looking for proof for their statements, it does not mean, yes, that now, we are the ones to judge that. What we're saying is that when scholars differ, okay, so you have scholars differing. Yes, us as people who are ignorant, as tulab al-ilm or people that are not qualified, Allah has commanded us with, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ We have to ask the scholars. Mm-hmm. But now the question is, two scholars have differed. Okay? Now, which of them is right? Which of them is wrong? That's when you look at the delil in order to come. To a conclusion of who's right and who's wrong It could be your sheikh that's right It could be your sheikh that's wrong Do not have ta'assub Because everybody can make mistakes And I wanted yeah. to add one benefit Which I've mentioned before On a that I've done And I'm sure I think you must have heard this A benefit from Sheikh Adil Mansour Wallahi the most Amazing benefit I've heard from a scholar In this topic Which is he said Hafizullah Ta'ala That Just the way that the prophets and messengers are afflicted with calamities. Mm-hmm. Yes, the prophets and messengers who are ma'asum, they are protected from making religious mistakes, yes, and these sort of things, but they are still subject to the worldly calamities, such as getting sick mm-hmm. or, or being atta- attacked or being poor or these sort of things, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The Sheikh said, just the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established this in order to protect al-maqam al-rububiyya, the level of rububiyya, so that nobody now says that this prophet is a rabb or he has control of the universe. La. If this same prophet, like our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he got hurt in the battle of Uhud, like Muhammad al Wahhab used it as a proof, yes, and Allah says, لَيْسَ لَكَ مِنَ الْأَمْرِ شَيْءِ And like Allah said to the Prophet sallam, to proclaim that, uh, that, uh, uh, that the Prophet told the Prophet to say in the Quran and the meaning of the ayah being that La, that I do not possess any naf or dar for myself if I knew the unseen then no harm would come my way right so that's a proof so the calamities and the harm that come to the prophets and messengers it is to preserve what? rububiyyah the haq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likewise he said there's a very important correlation he said the mistakes that scholars make and the mistakes they fall into which sometimes are very what some would consider trivial mistakes basic mistakes Mm -hmm. he said these mistakes Allah has made it uh, pre-decreed on the scholars in order to protect the maqam of nubu and risalah in order to protect the level of messengerhood and uh, prophethood and messengership Mm -hmm. why? Because this is something only for prophets and messengers that they don't make mistakes when it comes to religious rulings and uh, al wahi. They don't make mistakes. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and all of the prophets, they are protected from such a mistake. So, in order to preserve that station and make sure that nobody shares that with them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has pre decreed that every scholar has a zalla. Mm. Every scholar has a mistake. So. You're not going to find a scholar that has never fallen into a mistake. So if you so. have this understanding that you think your sheikh can never make a mistake, you have to go and read Kitab al-Tawheed <laughs> before anything so. else. <laughs> go so. back, iqra' Kitab al-Tawheed for indeed you have not understood Tawheed the way you should have understood it. Or you have not understood Ittiba' the way you should have understood it. 
No. So add, add into that point, just like uh, because time is running a little bit late. So we're gonna um probably continue the next point uh on another podcast, inshallah. Oh, I, had, with, I, had, uh, I had a nice one. I was gonna mention the story of Sheikh Hamoud and Sheikh Bin. <laughs> we're dealing with the we're, no, I'm talking about we're dealing with the statements of the um the scholars okay. proof. We'll deal with that next time, inshallah. But uh, just to drive the point home, there was a uh there was a narration from Sheikh Osama Taymiyyah. He brings it uh in his book when dealing with the uh Talbis and Jahmiya, right? He he narrates it from uh uh Abi Musa al Madini. He says that he came to uh, Al Asfahani, we're down in year 430. And he said, Akhta Muhammad ibn Khuzayma fi hadith suwa. So he, Ibn Khuzayma had made a mistake with regards to a particular uh, issue. But he told him that we do not speak ill of him. We don't talk, speak ill of him because of this mistake. Rather, we just don't take this mistake. We don't deal with uh, the mistake. And Abu Musa, he goes on to say, what is intended by this? He goes on and says uh, that yani, he, he's alluding to the fact that there's no imam except it. He, he has some type of mistakes. If we leave that imam by way of that mistake in which he fell into, we would leave off a lot of a lot of imams. This is something which is not befitting for us to do. Okay, this is something which is not befitting for us to do. So I think that helps drive that that point home as, as far as you know being okay to leave the mistake, explain it, but the uh yani the honor of that scholar remains. So that again, okay, like I, I said, still, that was in the Bayan al Tamis al Jahmiya, but also you have Sheikh Sheikh uh which we don't get the chance to read some of his statements today, but he has it in his uh Majmu al Fatal or Sa'i. Uh and he discusses um different points of how the, the student of knowledge should be dealing with the zalat al ulama and it's pretty much what i was quoting today when i was explaining the ifrat with the and things like this no huh. i i want you to give me three minutes i need to show the story of Sheikh Uthamir, Sheikh Hamoud, Tawajir, because of his connection hey to, 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 let me look right now because we have the the event's been called okay you got three minutes three minutes okay, <laughs> three minutes. okay so uh, bismillah so we have uh, this book, right, written by Sheikh Hamoud al Tawajir. Sheikh bin Uthameen, rahimahullah ta'ala, he made a mistake in Aqeedah, yes. Yeah, he made a mistake in Aqeedah in one of his explanations, a major mistake, um, which Sheikh Hamoud al Tawajir, rahimahullah, he wrote a whole book on. As you can see, the book is 173 pages. You can see my page, my screen, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the book is titled Ithbat Uluwillahi wa Mubayanati li Khalqihi wa Rad ala man za'ama anna ma'iyyat Allahi lil Khalqi thatiyya. This man Zama is basically Sheikh bin Uthaymeen, right? So Sheikh Hamoud al he wrote this refutation and he took it to Sheikh bin Baz. And Sheikh bin Baz, he wrote an introduction for it in which he says that the Mu'allif himself, Sheikh Hamoud al read the whole book to him from beginning till end. And he advised the people with reading this book. Now, <clears throat> and he mentions clearly in the book why he wrote it. He said because he saw a maqal by Ba'd al-Mu'asirin in which he claimed X, Y, and Z. Again, meaning Sheikh bin Uthaymeen and the mistake that he made. He made. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned that, uh, you know, there's tanaqud in his kalam and he's ma made some statements that are very straightforward and to the point. Um, and then in his refutation, uh, Rahimahullah, he um, mentioned uh, a lot of things, proofs from the Quran and the Sunnah and the Sahaba and Ijma' and statements of imams and scholars to prove how Sheikh bin Uthaymeen made a mistake. Now, the point really is, the book is beneficial, everybody should read it. But Sheikh Uthameen gave us a master class on how to take criticism. Yes, and a master class on sticking up with the truth. Sheikh bin Uthameen and Sheikh bin Baz as well. Sheikh bin Baz, um, when Sheikh bin Uthameen heard about this and that this book is being published, he called Sheikh bin Baz, as mentioned at the uh, uh, end of the book here. فَقَدْ طَلَبَ الشَّيْخْ مُحَمْدِ بِنْ صَالِحَ الْعُثَيْمِينَ مِنَ الشَّيْخْ عَبْدَ الْعَزِيزِ بِنْ بَاز and يبعث إليه بكتابي. So Sheikh bin Uthameen called Sheikh bin Baz. He said to him, send me a copy of Sheikh Hamoud al Tawajiri's book, he said. Okay? That's what he mentions here. So Sheikh bin Baz, that's what he done. He sent him a copy of the book. And um, then Sheikh bin Uthameen advised that the book should be spread and should be sent around. 
on top of that, Sheikh bin Uthaymeen himself, he's made his own statement about the book in which he praises the book. He breaks down the book uh, and he says, al-fadl, he says, Sheikh Hamoud bin Abdullah Twajir. This book, there's a reputation of him, Akhi. Introduction by Bin Baz <laughs> that he didn't even know about. He heard the rumor. He called Bin Baz. Sheikh Hamoud Twajir never contacted him. He never told him. He told, he asked Sheikh bin Baz to send him a copy. He got the book, the copy, and he, he wrote this introduction literally uh, 15 days uh, after he, Sheikh Hamoud Twajir, he wrote the book. And he says here, yeah. He says, everything he said, it is the truth, it is the haq. Basically, uh, Sheikh Abdul Razak al-Badr, Hafizahullah, he talks about this, by the way, in this uh, clip of here. Maybe you can share the link with everyone. But I just want to get everybody's attention to uh, number to the minute, uh, 9 minutes and 36 seconds, where the Sheikh talks about the reason why he mentioned this story. He said, first and foremost, I mentioned it because of the value of this book. And also so that we can learn the akhlaq of the ulama and that the haq is their guide wherever it might they might find it. They have no ta'asub for themselves and they don't look at their own nafs and their own feelings and what have you. Sheikh Hamoud says all of this is batil and he makes a lot of strong statements. And Sheikh Uthameen says all of it is haq. And the Sheikh says, Abd Razak says this needs practice. A student of knowledge has to practice this, this whereby he can take criticism if he's wrong. And he doesn't go into defensive mode. And he doesn't, uh, if you like, um, rile up everyone and, and, and cause Salafis to split. No. He needs to learn how to take criticism. This needs practice. So that there's no ta'asub. There's no khusumat. There's no back and forth. There's no shahna. There's no feeling of hatred in people's hearts. And the Sheikh says that you might find with some students of knowledge upon wrong foundations. Wallahi, akhi, this story is an absolute masterclass. There's a lot of takeaways. Some of the takeaways that I want to share, only these six, inshallah, I hope my time's not finished, but five takeaways <laughs> really, I just want people to think about. Number one, what did Sheikh bin Baz and Sheikh bin Uthameen judge the book on? What did they judge it on? They judged it on the contents, not on who is being indirectly attacked. <laughs> yeah. Not about the shakhs, not about who made the statement, not about if the shoe fits or not. La. Sheikh bin Baz, he gave the introduction because the contents of the book are haq. Sheikh bin Uthaymeen wrote this introduction, praised the book because the contents is haq, even though he himself is the person who fell into that mistake. Secondly, did Sheikh Hamoud contact Sheikh bin Uthaymeen before publishing it? No, he didn't. Why? Because clarifying the truth is one thing. Yes, and putting hukum on someone else is something else. All right? If Sheikh bin Hamoud Atwaj was going to call Sheikh bin Uthaymeen a mubtadi' or he was going to write a refutation of him by name, then you would say, okay, you might want to contact him, right? But he didn't need to do that because this is about clarifying the truth, regardless of who said it. Likewise, mm -hmm. did Sheikh bin Baz call Sheikh bin Uthameen before writing an introduction? Did he say, oh, bin, ba oh, bin Uthameen, I've got a book here that's about something that you said. Huh? Uh, what, what do you think I should do? Did Sheikh bin Uthameen become upset that he wasn't advised privately first? Did he say, why didn't Sheikh Hamoud Tawajir contact me and advise me so that I can rectify it myself? Okay? Did Sheikh bin Baz give him a heads up? Why didn't he give him a heads up? Why didn't Sheikh bin Baz call him and say to him, you know, bin Uthaymeen, get ready to defend yourself? Mm -hmm. Subhanallah. Did Sheikh Uthaymeen cite his other correct statements and make excuses for himself? Because this statement, even Sheikh Hamoud Tawajir mentions there's tanaqud. There are places where Sheikh bin Uthaymeen makes the correct statement and there are places where he makes the statement that is wrong. Did he say, uh, why did he not look at my correct statements? Why is he sticking to my wrong statements? My correct statements, they explain the mistake. No, they don't. Or I have clarified. Did he say that's not what I meant? And the proof that I didn't mean is because I said this here and there. And I have clarified already. He didn't do look what at, I look, didn't. Look, at, look at my whole body of work and look at what I've been teaching. And exactly. What I mean, and, and how my da'wah has spread. And la, this is nothing to do with you. <laughs> this is how you made. You said something that's batal. It will be refuted. You know? <laughs> Now, conclusion. Alhamdulillah, I got 10 seconds. Alhamdulillah, I can't believe I made it. Conclusion, Akhi. The conclusion, Akhi, is that the truth comes before personalities. And we should never forsake the truth and be quiet to preserve people's reputations or their or their followers' feelings. Mm -hmm. And this story, subhanAllah, Akhi Al-Kareem, every single person should take benefit from the story. Wallahi, we talk about things in terms of theory, but now you have a real-life example, an absolute masterclass of what it means to be a talib ilm, to be a scholar, what it means to call to the haq, what it means to own your mistakes, what it means to be humble, and what it means to stand up for the truth. 100%. And 
I made I made these uh, takeaways will lie a la ujala, يعني, because you know yeah. time <laughs> is time is of the essence. Like you will lie, this book and the lessons to be taken from it, it could be a whole episode all by itself. Sahih, sahih. Jazakallah khair, I think that's a good place to stop. And inshallah, we had the um the other part we wanted to finish as far as look using the statements of scholars as proof and just touching on that and what is you know what's the correct methodology in dealing with such a matter and if we do it, how we do it. <clears throat> If it's, if it's even acceptable, etc. But we'll continue that in the next podcast, inshallah, because the time is tight. Uh, the event for the heart has been called, and it's time to hit the prayer. Um, any know. further things before we finish out? No, no that's it. Okay, so it's 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 reminder it's to the listeners and the viewers to go ahead and like, share, and subscribe. Jazakumullah khair. Wa subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik wa shalwillah ilaha ant. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.